agriculture on the move. 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 Hello again, St. Lucia, and welcome to the program, Agriculture on the Move. My name is Philip Sidney, your host. Today, we have a very special guest, and that guest is the captain of the agricultural ship, steering that ship to food security, and he is none other than the Honorable Alfred Paul Prosper, who has responsibility for agriculture fisheries. Um, and also food security, food security mm -hmm. and rural development. My mind went a bit away. <laughs> Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much, and it's always a pleasure to be part of this program, to you know highlight and inform the Lucians of the progress that we are making in agriculture. Definitely. Yes. Some time ago, um, in the, your presentation in the budget debate, you highlighted the achievements during the period 2020 to 23. Give us some highlights on those achievements from the ministry. The agricultural sector did very, very well in some key subsectors like livestock, the banana industry, fisheries, and general crop production. And I was very, very impressed when I saw the figures coming from the Economic and Social Review of 2022. And that is a document that captures information on how well the various sectors are doing. And I was very happy to see that our production, overall production, overall in terms of value added in the agricultural sector, increased by 9.8% wow. over the last two consecutive year, previous years that was extremely low, and we know during that time, COVID would have been the major factor causing a reduction in value added in terms of agriculture. We also saw an increase in banana production in 2022. Banana production increased by 10 point, almost 11%. And what was amazing, although we had a major problem with sustaining the UK market, but we were able to capture a 58.2% expansion of our bananas in the regional market, which is exciting, excellent, and should be continued. Mm -hmm. Because the banana production in the region, there is tremendous potential. And let's just see, had we not have the regional markets available to us, the situation that existed in the UK as a result of the supply chain issues, the high cost of freight, we would have been suffering a serious blow to that industry. But fortunately for us, we are seeing an increase in demand by a number of countries in the region for our bananas. As we speak, the figure that I, I was informed of recently was currently we need 14,500 boxes a week and we are only supplying about 6,500 boxes of bananas. So it means that we are very low in terms of meeting our quota and having understand the importance of the industry. We met all the stakeholders sometime in May, March of this year. And we sat around the table and they expressed their concerns in you know, what uh, the key requirements for them to increase production. And one of the requirements were, was that government needs to assist them um, further in terms of the fertilizer. The cost of fertilizer has always been a problem, although our government provided two subsidies, one in September last year and one in January. They are still making a request for increased assistance or more support to enable them to increase their production. Mm -hmm. And we have a submitted a memo to the cabinet, and the cabinet has embraced it. And very soon, we should be 
providing some more support to our farmers. But in this case, I want to mention, it will not only be the banana farmers, we are also going to be providing that support to the plantain farmers, because the plantain farmers also play a very important role in terms of exports, but they too are also suffering as a result of the high cost of fertilizer. Okay. We are also going to add a new component of support, in this case, nematicide, because it does not make any sense providing the fertilizer, but at the same time, you are not treating the health or taking so care of the, the health of the plant. The root system. And that is the root system. If the root system is not healthy, then the uptake of fertilizer will not take place. Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited, I'm very happy that this is happening. But really and truly, also in livestock, we've done well in livestock, we did, we, are, we did very well in chicken and pork, and also eggs. And that is very, very good for us as a country in terms of increasing our production to ensure that we are food secure. Fisheries, fisheries did very well as well. We saw some increased landings of fish in 2022. So they, 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 this occurs very well for the sector. And I just wish and hope that the government can you know, work with the farmers, our ministry can continue to give support to the stakeholders in the sector to continue that level of achievement and increase our production in all areas. Where were we with um, our vegetable section? Our vegetable section also did well. Uh, we, we increased our, in, our achievement in 2020 was about 9% increase in vegetable production. And that includes, you know, fresh vegetables like the cabbage and the tomatoes, tomatoes and, the lettuce, and so on. Stuff, yeah. And that was a result of, I must say, the seven crops would have contributed to that because the seven crops program continued to provide support to farmers in terms of subsidy on fertilizers, pit moss, irrigation system and lines, and a number of other um, pieces of equipment that they require to help boost production. So that was good. Last year you saw the 4,000 bags of fertilizer that was given to the farmers, free of charge, the vegetable farmers. So that really helped increase production and really, really did well for the sector. My only concern, as I have always been saying, is that we, we must continue to make a big dent in reducing our food import bill. Mm -hmm. And I know St. Lucia stands ready and we are doing the best that is possible to make it happen. Okay, um, that being said, you're moving forward. Moving so forward. We, 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 we have to achieve more, more than we did the last period. Yes. So moving into 20 through 24, let us go back to the banana, in the, the banana industry. What is it that we expect to moving forward? Well, one, we must be consistent in our supply of bananas, in our production. Here is it we have a market, but we are barely meeting half of the market demand. Obviously, for our farmers to continue to secure that market, we must produce bananas on a sustainable basis. Mm -hmm. Now, we know we have a dry, and wet season, and we expect in the dry season our production will be low. But in the rainy season, when we expect production to be high, we want it to happen on a sustainable basis. Because we've been engaging some of the regional um, importers, and they are saying to us, yes, they make the demand, let's say through NFTU and through the other private um, exporters. But the quantities that they are demanding are not available on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. So you can't be saying to an exporter, an importer in Trinidad, that we are going to supply with 2,000 boxes a week. The first week you get 2,000, the second week you get 1,500 so, and continues. So. This is not business mm -hmm. and this is what we have to do. But in order for us to do that, we must give support to the farmers. The cost of shipping, the cost of um, the inputs, and this is what we have been doing to ensure that they can remain steadfast in terms of maintaining that production level, maintaining the yield that they require to be able to penetrate that market and to consistently provide what is needed. So moving forward, you're looking at not only the regional market, but again back to our export yes. to the UK. We must continue to remember the UK is 
provide a lot more in terms of income back to the family. They pay a lot more for our bananas. Mm -hmm. But we must ensure that we secure yeah. the regional market first. That is key to us because the issues are less in terms of shipping and time um, and time frame in terms of moving the food mm -hmm. from here to the region versus moving it, the food from here to London and all the issues in terms of not having a ripening facility in the UK. There are a number of issues that really makes it difficult for us to continue on a sustainable basis to the UK. But if we can secure a regional market, which I believe we can do, then whatever surplus is there, we can begin now thinking of how we can continue into the UK. But I believe for now we need to place all our focus on the region because the market is available, we can move our foods very quickly, and I believe that is an opportunity for us to take advantage of. Yes, our banana industry is key. However, there is a threat. There is a major threat. A major threat. And it worries me. Right at our doorstep. It's not here yet. It's not here, and we, maybe it's here and we're not aware. Yeah. But because it is very close to us, which is not too far away, Venezuela, it's already in Venezuela, it can get to our doorstep. And that is our physical will to tropical yes. race 4. They call TR4. it a tropical race 4. It is a soil borne disease that begins to affect the roots of the banana trees. It causes wilting of the trees. And depend on what level of stage it is, we cannot, cannot cure the problem. That's right. In other words, if it gets into St. Lucia, it affects planting, it affects bananas, and other species, I think, like Macambo. Macambo, yeah. This disease is a very dangerous and destructive disease. And I'm appealing to the farmers to be vigilant in terms of the, um, um, the, the um, monitoring, the, monitoring the, the, the plantation to so see if there is any discoloration or any you know, signs unusual, of something yes, unusual yeah, in the fields, is, bananas, yeah. planting, etc. And to call on them to report it to the ministry or any agricultural officer in the region so that we can begin to investigate whether it is that disease. I know in Australia, that disease wiped out the entire Musa species, which is the banana um, um, species in, 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 um, the, in Australia. Australia. And there are many other countries like Peru, it has happened. This is why the ministry understanding the devastating nature of this disease has put in place measures to begin sensitization, to begin increasing our biosecurity at our ports to ensure that we put all the preventative measures in place to avoid this disease coming to St. Lucia. So I wish I could say it in part of all our farmers to understand. Not that I'm saying they don't understand English, but just to be able to hit the needle so that every farmer, every St. Lucian understand this negative impact, impact this can have on our agricultural sector. And if not, not only that, the sure. seriousness of this has been taken a bit further. In fact, you have gotten a, a committee specifically looking into, into that, that matter. So that, so that we will be able to launch it to the farmer in Creole at all levels so that they levels. can understand yes. what's what. Really and the good happening. thing about the committee is that we have people, um, representatives from SLASPA, we have representatives from the, the farmer groups, we have representatives from the private exporters, we have representatives of the ministry, and so we have a, a, a combined team of key people who will be involved in pushing the agenda of sensitization, site visits to the various fields, engaging the farmers. Publicity. Publicity. Yeah. Um, signs in, in, on, at the, at the ports, ports and, and so on. Ports, yeah. Seaports, etc. Our footpaths. Our footpaths. Mm -hmm. And to really, 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 you know, get on top of this and to take all the proactive measures necessary to avoid it getting into St. Lucia. As we always say, fig glasses and nutrients. Fig glasses and nutrients, pas a kiti, a kiti, a li, a vano, through anti-disease. But this is a very um, serious concern, and I have engaged all the people in the ministry to tell them how important it is, and for us to take the necessary measures. I always believe the proactive approach is the best. Mm -hmm. You know, being reactive is not always successful, because just imagine this disease there and how quick it can spread. And at that moment, we are going and saying, this is what we should have done. I believe in proactive measures. Yes, that's what it is. This is one thing I must say that I have always been demanding of my ministry to ensure that we take proactive measures to avoid the impact on the sector. 
considering the importance of, the of that industry. Well says. With, with that in mind, we are due for our break. You are watching Agriculture the Move. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon. Don't go away. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development is placing heavy emphasis on the concept of food security. It's our prosperity, our future. The Cocoa Sector Enhancement Project, CSEP, is targeting the rehabilitation of at least 201 acres of cocoa and the expansion of at least 294 acres. It protects against main diseases like black pod and witch's broom and pests like rodents. It secures the appropriate enabling environment to advance the sector. To learn more about the Cocoa Sector Enhancement Project, please contact Project Coordinator at 459-7003. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move. And of course, my guest, the Honorable Alfred Prosper, the Minister for Responsibility for Agriculture, Fisheries, uh, Food Security and Rural Development. Now we have understood exactly the sectors that are very key and we have more programs that are coming this year that I think farmers should be aware of uh, because it's coming their way with, 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 with speed, as you can see. Mm -hmm. There's this project called the UBEC project and uh, it is the unleashing of the blue economy project. in the Caribbean. Yes. All right, and it's get towards food security. Tell us about this project. This project is a world bank project. And every time I speak of this project, I smile because I see tremendous benefits for the entire agricultural sector. We are getting support from the World Bank in terms of a sum of almost about 10 million US, which will go directly into the agricultural sector. And that includes fisheries, livestock, crops, and a number of other areas of support that will be given to our stakeholders in the sector. This project is a one-year project, and so it focuses on providing assistance to fisheries. So for example, fisheries, safety at sea is a, a serious concern, and we know what happens to our fishers on a regular basis. So we'll be providing some level of support to addressing that problem. Hygiene in terms of our, our, our fisheries. You know, when you go to the ports, mm -hmm. you see that, you know, our, the fish cleaners, what they do, I don't have to explain, you know, yes. you know, take the fish and, you know, sometimes they barely have water and we need to improve that. So we need to be able to, you know, change that. We also will be giving support to fisheries and more devices in terms of more support to the fishers in terms of the fisheries fans. Agri agri devices, what they call the fans. the fans, yes. You know, because we know the fans now will reduce on the cost of the fisher in terms of having to purchase the gas, which you know is a little expensive. Mm -hmm. And they can go to those, those fans and fish and be able to still earn a proper livelihood, you know, as a fisher. We are going to place tremendous focus on that. We are going to be also giving support to livestock. And we are going to implement what we call a national artificial insemination program. The opening of the Bosejou, the Volatile Volta 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 Center in the next few weeks, mm -hmm. it goes well for that. But we are going to have programs in terms of increasing our livestock production. We will be bringing in new bloodlines or new breeds into St. Lucia that would help boost livestock. And more importantly, we will be providing the level of training and capacity building for the livestock farmers to ensure that they can understand how to manage the, the breeds and the, and the stock, animal stock, and to be able to make more money. In terms of crops, we are going to focus on provision of assistance for drainage, irrigation, input support, machinery, small machinery, because it is important for us to grow the sector and mechanize the sector and bring in new technology. So I see tremendous opportunity for the agricultural sector. And I forgot to mention areas like greenhouse agriculture. Mm -hmm. We know what happens to the farmers in the rainy season when you know the, um, consistent rains can reduce the yield and production. And so it does well for the, mini, uh, for, the, for the sector, but really it is an attempt for us to reduce our level of food insecurity 
by enabling our farmers, our fishers, and other persons in the sector to produce more and so that we can eat a lot more of what we produce and we can produce a lot more of what we eat, all in an effort to reduce our food import bill in the near future. Do, do you foresee, um, that program is for uh, one year, right? It's a one year program. And what sort, of, what, what sort of funding are you looking at? And we're looking at 10 million US, which is about 25 million EC dollars. To spend in one year? In one year, so this is why I'm very concerned and what we are doing as a ministry is to be able to ensure all our procurement plans, all our plans are in place because we are hoping that this project would start the 1st of September for another 12 months. But you don't want to wait when September starts for you to be figuring out where, for example, to get the new breeds, the new bloodlines. All of the things that are supposed to be done before that should be in place. So when our procurement time is there, we will not be looking at what we have not done and what we should have done. And this is one of the things that I've been pointing out to my staff, that we must put all our plans in place. So as soon as that date starts and we have the money, we begin to implement and be, because one year is not a lot of time. Yes, so but yes. I would hate to know that we are receiving those funds and at the end of one year, half of it is not spent. The farmers, the fishers, and the stakeholders are the ones who would suffer. And I really wish all our stakeholders would be able to benefit from this because the overall goal objectives of it is to reduce our food insecurity. We must be food secure. We must ensure that we can continue to feed ourselves. So I see tremendous potential in this, in this project for our farmers, our fishers, everyone in the sector, and the government, the people as a whole. Mm -hmm. And I just hope that it will be one of those, those success programs that we can achieve as a government and a ministry. In terms of training, um, is it part a component in, in There's that? It's a big training component because a lot of times, you know, we just, um, people think we just get the money and just give it and buy it. And the thing about the money, the, the funds that we are getting, it's limited. There are certain things you cannot do. Right. So you cannot use it to buy two vehicles. You cannot use it to buy a building. A lot of it is support. More or less support, capacity, capacity building, building, training, training of extension officers, extension officers, we need, our yeah. farmers, farmers new technology fishers. in agriculture, yes, yes, you yes. know the fishers, the support in terms of safety. But you, you cannot use the funds to say, I'm going to pay for a road, a feeder road into Ma in Mao or Demi or whatever. You right. cannot use the funds. There are limitations in terms of how you use the funds. But it's, it can allow us to do a lot of procurement. You know, so if we want to give support to the food farmer in the middle of fertilizer, we can do that. We can um, give support in terms of tillage and drainage and maintenance. But you bring in new, new, new equipment. And we can bring in new equipment, we can bring in new blood Tractors lines and, so, and so on. We can do all of that, but we cannot buy a building. Mm -hmm. Or see, we want to buy two vehicles and give one to the ministry and give one to marketing. But it's mm -hmm. That kind of mm -hmm. the limitations. Mm -hmm. In terms of your... As you mentioned, marketing and marketing board. Um, moving forward, what I know, marketing board have done quite a lot. And but then, what what do you think is a, your objective, your main aim for marketing board, um, as far as marketing of produce is concerned? I, I believe, and I'm not sure whether the marketing board understands that, but it's really supposed to be a marketing entity mm -hmm. for our farmers. You don't want to be asking farmers to grow, plant, pour we produce, increase production. We want more melons, we want more cucumbers, we want more. But when they are ready to sell, they do not know where to turn. And this is the whole idea of the marketing board, to be able to buy everything our farmers grow and produce, and then to redistribute to the hotels, to the supermarkets, and to the small restaurants. Now, when a farmer is at the level where he's ready for harvest, and he's been told, I cannot buy your fruits, I cannot buy your, your, your produce, or I can buy, but that's the only price I can pay, and the price that they offer in the farmer is very low. I also want to see marketing board not only focus on local distribution and export, but export to the region and other countries in the world. So we have to be able to 
encourage farmers to sign more contracts with the marketing board. Now we know the marketing board suffered a financial, went through a financial um, problem in recent months. And we are now working with the St. Lucia Development Bank to give some financial support to marketing board in terms of a loan. I know they are very close to closing that chapter. So marketing board will be able to sustain itself and be able to have enough funds to be able to pay farmers. Just imagine you, you, you sell, as a farmer, you sell to the marketing board and you have to wait six weeks, one month to get your money. There is no way that this farmer will be encouraged to continue selling. So we must ensure that we give marketing board the support it requires. And the good government that we are, and the government that is putting people first, we are now, this year, we approve a subvention of $250,000 for the marketing board to help it with being able to get the resources to be able to buy more and to be able to sell. But my vision for the marketing board is to buy as much as possible from our farmers and export to the region, to other countries, and to make our farmers be more comfortable in increasing their production, but also getting a very good price for the hard work. The UBEC program will be looking at um, the um, SIMOS project also? Yes, all aspects of agriculture. Cuckoo, cuckoo, and just to mention the cuckoo, we have the cuckoo project, we have $1.4 million that was approved, and the whole idea of the cuckoo project is to diversify the agricultural sector. Mm -hmm. We must do that. And just as I mentioned, considering what the TR4, if it gets to St. Lucia, the potential, to, mm -hmm. you must have other crops that you can depend on. And this is why the cocoa project is very important because we have a lot of plantations of cocoa. A lot of the plantations are not well managed. The, the, we, we, we know the cocoa port problem that is affecting our farmers, but there is a sustainable, reliable market in the UK that can buy all the cocoa that we produce in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. And so that's an opportunity for our farmers who may, may not be very much involved in, 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 in active agriculture to be able to maintain his little cocoa plantation and, and be able to earn a livelihood from that. So that is a very good project and anyway, we are continuing that project. I also want to mention that my concern with regards to the fisheries facilities, those facilities that the Japanese mm -hmm. government give us, mm -hmm. we have an amount of money available and we are going to give attention to Denry, we're going to give Miku a washroom facility, we're going to give support to the Viewfort facility, Sufre, Grosile, and Slurry Canaries. And we're hoping that we can upgrade those facilities because when those facilities were donated to us, there was no consideration for maintenance of these facilities. And we are seeing a rapid deterioration of the facilities. That is why the government, our government has to, you know, upgrade and ensure that these facilities are, con will continue to provide the functions that it was meant for. As we're ending, <laughs> you'll come to the end of the program already, Honorable. Any final words from you? Yeah, I just, I just want to say to the stakeholders in the sector that we know they are, they are going through challenging times. We know climate change is impacting them. We know the, the high cost of inputs they are going through. But I want to tell them that we as a government, we as a ministry, understands that and we know that. And whatever we can do to assist them in their production, in their, their li um, meeting their livelihoods, and continue to produce food for us, we understand that without food we cannot survive. And I just want them to be a little patient sometimes when they don't get the support right away. They seem to think that, you know, the government is not in it. But I know our government means well. And my government takes agriculture very, very seriously. And it's just a matter of us getting the, the, the resources to be able to do that. We also have another project I forgot to mention, which is the, the climate adaptation project. Another $9.9 .9 million that is supposed to be spent or in the sector over the next four years. So it took as well for us, and I just want them to be a little patient, but we value Thank the you, Minister. effort. Thank you very much for being a minister, and I wish you success. And I know you will be, you'll, you'll be successful Thank moving you forward much. in your ministry. Yes. Thank you very much. You've been watching Thank Agriculture in the Move. Of course, my guest, Honorable Alfred Prosper, Minister for Agriculture. We want to say thank you for viewing the program. And remember, agriculture is our business. Eat fresh. St. Lucia's best. I'm Philip Sidney. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Agriculture on the move. 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 Agriculture on the move.